Oh my God. Anyway, we'll <laughs> we'll flip back real quick. Okay. Sarah Sarah Jade, give me your caches again. My God. <laughs> You know, I got all excited. I got I got all excited about getting started because you had to leave and I forgot to hit My caches were the Fitz and Susan scenes, Susan Power. Um, my second one was the Edison scene with him and Papa Pope in the kitchen where he almost wet his pants and didn't know how to answer the question. And then mm -hmm. the scenes with Fitz and Olivia. Okay. And and so for me, again, as I was saying, um, Papa, when he used the word indecorous and then proceeded to just pretty much just rip the pages out of <laughs> rip the pages out of uh, Edison's book as he read <laughs> him for filth throughout that entire scene. And then, of course, uh, that moment when uh, when when um, Edison just kind of snapped out and said, Olivia did this. Do I told you Olivia did this. And the look on Jake's face like. Ooh. Yeah, Jake was like, oh, <laughs> Jake, Jake took that bite. Of, Jake took that bite out of that chicken, and he was like, "Oh shit!" Somebody Not gift that little so. moment of. <laughs> it was over. Ooh. It was Jake. Jake knew it was about to be a whole nother element <laughs> happening right there. So, what about you, Katrina? What What was your cash? What are your trash? You know what? My cash was all of. All of those scenes that um, you guys have said, especially the the Fitz and Olivia scenes. But I'm going to go ahead and also say that the scenes where um, Marcus was talking about. Yes. Yes. Cash. Oh, yes. <laughs> cash, 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 Forgot cash, about, cash. <laughs> Forgot about that one. Yes. I, yeah. so I mean. That. He just, I mean, he just flipped. It was just like, he, you could tell, you could tell he was reaching his limits. And then he said, oh my God, do you ever shut up? Are you <laughs> kidding me with how annoying you are? Yes, that's it. That's it. I was like, Marcus, you are all of us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yes, but she kept going, and then, uh, then it was a cute, that cute, the cute little scene while they were in the dressing room where he was reading the mean oh. tweets about himself. Hi, booty. That was hi, booty. Hi, booty. Mm -hmm. hi, booty boo. Yes. yes. So yeah, that was cash. I can't, and you know what? I literally cannot think of any trash moments because no, for this, really for this couldn't. one time, for this one time, literally, even Jake didn't annoy me. It was just yeah. like because he was so well, hilarious. He only had like so one hilarious. line though. <laughs> yeah, if you're hungry, chickens in the fridge. You know that. Was, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I mean, but he didn't even. But he was hilarious without even having to speak. You know. Oh yeah. So, Some of all the all the awards happen in when he's not speaking. <laughs> when he's yeah. not speaking. Yeah, when he's not speaking, <laughs> and he's just looking and eating chicken. I mean, I really feel like that's where he shines. Yeah, I do. Yes, so in, the, in the kitchen, <laughs> and and you know, not not to not to bounce ahead, but what's going on with? I know Moretta. I know. Don't don't kill me. Uh, <laughs> why but, is uh, why do we do we have a spammer in here? A spammer? Yeah. Anyway, do you mean? I don't want to pay attention. White PhD nerdy. No, I didn't a see it. Or whatever in there. Anyway, uh. but. Um, I'm sorry, what was I saying? I got thrown off because I was responding to Moretta because she was saying, damn, because I forgot to record. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, what I was, I think I was about to say is about the uh, connections of, of him eating. What's going on with Jake and all of this eating? It's like Everybody every time we see him on, every, every time we see him on camera now, he's he's eating. So it's like, is he eating his feelings? What's going on? Maybe he's stressed or getting married. Uh, to yeah, because of the, married yeah, marrying something that he Maybe. doesn't want to marry. Somebody doesn't want to marry, correct. Yeah, because we're well, clearly that's... in his workouts with his uh, sister. So, Ooh. you know, I don't yeah. have any other way to work out his stress. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> and, clearly, like... and clearly that, that the marriage is uh, <sighs> Rowan's idea. So, yeah, Obviously. I could imagine him being, mm. yeah, Obviously. easy. He's eating his feelings. Mm. So, so let's see. Going on to number two in this episode. Um, I'm sorry, number three. And what was the game changing moment in this mm. for this particular episode for you? Well, I think for me the game changing moment was when Quinn went to Abby for help. Yeah. 
I really feel like it's, she's obviously been in a downward spiral and I think everybody has noticed that, but nobody has kind of drawn attention to it and said, Hey, (laughs) I think we're all seeing the same thing here. I I think Mm -hmm. everybody's seen little moments. So that moment when Quinn actually went to Abby for help, I thought, okay, well, at least they're now at least all getting on board because she needs some help. Woo, she needs help. (laughs) She needs help. But she's not that the kind she willingly accepted. So no, no. Well, well, that's why they had to bring in. Yeah, that's why they had yeah, to bring, in, had the to bring in the big guns. I mean, oh, right. Abby yeah. wasn't about to go in there and try. You know, she wasn't right. like, oh, you know, I'll try first. No, she's like, let's go to who is the, you know, the only one who could possibly get through to her. Let's go to and him. And they first. are that for each other, you know. And I think this is maybe I don't know if this might be the first time where Fitz gets called in because Olivia needs real help. She's always the one you know, somebody is calling in to fix fits or, you know, make it right yeah. or get him mm-hmm. to, you know, get help or get back, get his head in the game or whatever. Cyrus has done it. Melly has done it. You know, mm-hmm. Abby has done it since she's, um, you know, been there. And this is the first time we see them bringing him in. And I think it's really great that mm-hmm. they are able to do this at this point in their relationship because they're always in relation. Mm-hmm you know, to each other, no matter what state their, you know, their romance uh, is, is in. And I think that Quinn was smart enough to know that no Olivia, that you can't talk to her yeah. where she is right now. She's not going to, she's not in a place to receive it or to even acknowledge it. Cause she's so far in denial that they had to stage an intervention because mm-hmm. that's what that was. And absolutely. Uh, and to me, absolutely. it was significant because that's what you do for someone who, who is, um, who's not just behaving badly, but their behavior is in danger of ending their life or destroying mm-hmm. so much, you know, you know, uh, Jane, you said before that Olivia is exhibiting behavior of an addict. And I think that mm-hmm. that's so true. And that intervention kind of reflected mm-hmm. um, that right now. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, for me, it was a game changing moment. And even the moment that ha- that leads them to do the intervention is because Olivia willing to make shit up to get yeah. her way. I thought mm-hmm. you are on Ooh. a very bad road. Right very now. bad road. And that connects mm-hmm. to what happens in the next episode yeah. mm-hmm. with right. Andrew. Right. And right. Even, and because even... I was just going to say that that whole issue with Ronnie was like that next step, you know, yeah. that next step towards the darkness. Yeah. She's and even, stepping. And, yeah. And even Huck saw that coming and he was trying to stop it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he really did. Which, yeah, what you know, did by he the say way, to Quinn? I don't she's remember. She's going his to a exact, place where she can't come back from. Yeah. That she's exactly. Going, she's going somewhere she's right. not going to be able to come back from. Right. Yeah. And, uh, 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 kudos to you, um, Katrina, on your Tumblr review. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And um, but specs and script. If you're out there, love you too. My favorite line was he <laughs> about playing on the freeway in his wheelchair. Love it. <laughs> love love that love that line. Sorry to sorry to skip ahead like that. But that was that was awesome. Um, so for me, my game changing <laughs> moment was discovering that it was um, that it was Cyrus and Tom that had shut down the Edison rumor in order to best um, Alex, which yeah. was that was awesome. Oh, that was very that move was yeah. so Cyrus. Yeah, because it was it was like, come on, way. Cyrus, because he had Cyrus all up again. Like in five fifteen, he had Cyrus against the ropes, Cyrus. and Cyrus just in five sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> he came. He came back out and gave a knockout punch. Your, even your own brother couldn't back you up. He was just yeah. like, you know what? Yeah, let's let Cyrus handle this. So I was like, go ahead, Cyrus, go ahead. Cyrus is um, so fucked though because he, this is a family, right? And he has been messing with um, families for a while. Basically, mm-hmm. you know, Melly colluding behind Fitz's back to quit her job and like they said Fitz's career that's messing with family just to like get what he wants um mm-hmm. 
him, obviously, the shit that he's done to Olivia and Fitz and um, tried to do to Olivia just to maintain his place in Fitz's life as president. Like, he's done this a million times, and I just feel like something is going to happen with the Vargas's to really kind of put him in his mm. place. Like, this is a different game. These are different people. And these new players that we have in the show are really showing up these people that we've lived with for so many years for their awfulness in a lot of ways. Right. <laughs> um, a lot of contrast. Okay, so now it's time for audience comment, audience questions. And real quick, Moretta, what do you what do you mean by you hope Cyrus didn't hurt his candidate? Let's get that let's get that answer out of you real quick. And while we're waiting for that answer, um, we're gonna quickly go on to uh, who our favorite character was for this episode. Who is our favorite, who is our MVP in this episode and why? Susan Ross for me. Ooh, MVP. Susan Ross. Yes, Susan. Can, can Fitzgerald Grant that is as well. <laughs> when he came in, Susan. <laughs> Susan Power. <laughs> All of their scenes are so good, but I had to. I had to laugh so hard. Fitz came in and was like, "Oh, I couldn't come up with anything as pithy as the right. fish rots from the head." <laughs> that was hilarious. I was like, "Oh, he's still a little That's sore about that." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was that's so good. Doing the same shit, like, girl. Oh I'm yes, aren't you tired? Uh, <laughs> I love how she turned it around on him, though. She's like, "Oh, you coming here with your cute little <laughs> smile and your precious little sayings, you know? <laughs> you know?" I'm like, "Wait, you just did that like two episodes ago this when you went into the oval." Precious, it's hypocrisy. <laughs> this is how she is. I know. I know. If Olivia had a quote, as as it would be "Do as I mm-hmm. say, That's not her. as I do." <laughs> my my MVP was Marcus because he said yeah. what so many of us he he just he just let loose and he said what so many of us were have been thinking for a while and probably were thinking in that very moment because it was all about yes. her in that hallway and he was just like, "Oh my god!" And so it's that always was, all that, about Melly. It, yeah, mm-hmm. it always is. Even and in this so back where Olivia is. It is. It's always all right. about her. She has not so changed. Back to, back to Moretta real quick. She uh, has so not you, changed. So you think by going back to the nurse and having her recant her story that Cyrus may have hurt, hurt uh, Vargas? I'm not sure how that how that would, because first of all, they would have to know that it came from the Vargas camp in the first place. And I don't think anybody knew that. No, no which one. Was, which, yeah. which was which was which was lucky. So I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think that it's going to hurt Vargas now in terms of um so far, he's looking good, you know, and, and Cyrus ultimately made him made him look good because, number one, in him standing strong and basically saying, you know, I, I I'm not going to I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to comment on that because it's not my it's not my issue. Um, I think that made him look stronger than weaker. So that's my thought on that. Anybody else got any thoughts on that? No, I agree. He didn't say anything um, tasteless. You know, there was, uh, I mean, there was some like innuendo there, but I didn't think that there was anything that um, reporters would be able to hang him out to dry for. So I think he kind of kept his nose clean on that issue, whether it turned out to be true or not. You know, he stayed classy. Right. Right. He stayed neutral. He stayed neutral. Any, mm-hmm. any thoughts on that, Sarah? Yeah. Sarah? Frozen? I don't know. Oh, no. Can you hear us? Oh, we were just saying okay. if you had any thoughts on that. Did you have any thoughts on the Vargas situation, whether hear. or not that uh, the whole Edison thing would tank, tank him in any way? You know, this whole Vargas thing, it's like... Is this scene over yet for me? I'm yeah. like, you know, it's fine. Um, so but who who it's is your really least favorite character <laughs> in this episode and why? Melly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Melly. I mean, as mouthy as Melly. she is, I still kinda like her, but yeah, she it's was usually she was on my nerves for this particular episode. So yeah. Um and what are your top two character quotes from this episode? Obviously, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, whatever Marcus said about Kelly, 
Um, yeah. Sarah, Sarah knows people. exactly what he's... Like, yeah. Overprivileged. Something, something. Yeah, she's not people. <laughs> she's not people. <laughs> She's not people. I loved it because he looked at Huck and Huck's like, I'm, da- I'm oh, too dangerous. That's what it was. Are, <laughs> are you kidding me with how annoying you are right now? <laughs> that's... Do you think they're going to have sex? I mean, are you kidding me with mm, how annoying oh, I, I you are? Hope you not. are the worst. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, no, I hope not. It's I don't like, know. I, think, I think they need to up their game. I, I'm, I I'm hoping know. they're about to up, their, up the ante on what his usefulness is in the series because I get it that you got to slowly, gradually put him in, but I need for him to, you know, start pumping out some, you know, cause he's, he's had, he's had some really strong moments, but you know, it's like, they're, well, they're just kind of like eking, you know, taking this, they're taking their time. He's kind of, I feel like he's kind of waiting to, he's, He's there. He's he's going to be coming in. I mean, he represents he represents a lot of what mm-hmm. Olivia used to be, and I think that when the, especially when those two have scenes together, you see the uncomfortable feelings that she has towards him, and that's because he represents a lot of those things that she used to stand kind of for. Him. You know, the white hat, justice. So Miss Katrina, and she's not living that life anymore. You know, and so she feels very judged. You know, she feels very judged. So she's mm-hmm. like, I don't want, you I know, I'm not about this life. That's the usefulness <laughs> for me in, uh, in the show right now. And there's like an interesting parallel. You know, I talk about this in my piece between him and Fitz mm-hmm. and Olivia both kind of rejecting that do better um, kind of life that's, that is represented in Marcus there because Marcus came mm. on, as they said in 504, to do the right thing for Olivia when she needed help. And in that mm-hmm. episode, Fitz says the same thing about doing the right thing and he goes and he shows up for her. Like they both do in various ways. And they both do in this, you know, or, you know, or mm-hmm. trying to. Um, at this point in the episode, we saw Mar- we saw them both. The only people who asked or checked in with Olivia in 517, at least. And so Marcus's usefulness isn't explicit um, to the audience unless you're noticing that this woman is actively keeping Marcus on the periphery Mm. of her own darkness because she can't even engage with him because she's Mm -hmm. so much in denial about where she is and how far away she is from where she really needs to be. Um, and that is represented in Marcus being there in OPA. And that's why she rejects Fitz, you know, Fitz is first when he comes into her office about doing better. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're just here to like, you know, try to pull the wool over my eyes for your candidate. And it's like, who are you right now? You know, turning this Mm -hmm. around that I'm here to somehow manipulate you. Well, (laughs) yeah. You know, sick yeah, people, sick people like to be around other sick people, you know, you don't want to be around anybody who's going to try to make yeah. themselves better. They just, it's uncomfortable, it's okay. so, you know, I want to be in my little fantasy so, bubble of the world. So I don't, don't want to cut this short because I know you have to leave real yeah, soon. I have I, to go. We're just about to flip into the next episode and I just want to get your quick thoughts on it. So I'm going to, going to give the uh, synopsis of it so we can hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, And I just want to say real quick that I, you know, there's, you know, there's iffiness as to why Ronnie died and we we can discuss that at a later time or whatever, Mm -hmm. but you know, there's the option of suicide, but there's also the option that he may have actually been killed, but we can discuss that later. Um, I was thinking that actually. So, uh, Mm -hmm. so our synopsis on 517, Thwack, which was written by Zaheer McGee and directed by Tony Goldwyn. Former, Former Vice President Andrew Nichols reemerges from his induced stroke, able to speak and threatens to reveal to the media that Fitz went to war for for Olivia, uh, risking to take them all down. Olivia works with Fitz to try and pay him off, but when he refuses, but then he refuses. Meanwhile, Abby takes control in her new position as Olivia abnormally struggles to resolve the situation. Abby betrays Olivia by making Lillian... uh, by making a deal with Andrew and putting uh, Lillian in a situation to write a uh, story regarding Nellie's affair with Andrew. 
Olivia makes counter offers and threats, but Andrew is disinterested and is only interested in one thing, revenge. Olivia goes to extreme measures to keep him quiet. So, was the storyline for this episode compelling and why? And we're going to start with Katrina. Um, it, sorry, I'm like looking for my glasses. I don't know where I put them. Um, it was extremely compelling um, for me. It really hit home the bottom mm -hmm. that Olivia is in and her identity crisis. Um, you know, that's happening. This feeling that so much is slipping away um, from her. She is in another cage in a lot of ways. And it's kind of mm -hmm. one, as I said earlier, kind of kind of one of her own making shit my wife's calling me um and so i think the other thing for me is bringing the kidnapping thing back around and i hope it kind of leads somewhere that um attaches roman to it because that is yeah. my my feeling and I, I, a year ago i wrote out this theory about this um mm -hmm. but also showing that um the oh sorry one second baby do you see my glasses to. Um, the connection between her and Fitz being there always and that she he's the one that she turns to when she's at her lowest, when she's not bullshitting. She knows who she can turn to, right? Mm -hmm. Not putting up all these illusions. And um, the issue of the red door that we've been, you know, talking mm -hmm. about for a while, coming back and making that connection between at the end the the, the red door without its chains and going through Rowan's red door into her childhood home. And that idea of memory mm -hmm. and going back in order to figure out how to move forward. For me, that was really, really well done um, in this episode. Um, really mm -hmm. props to the editor um, who edited all of those sequences together and flashbacks in that way. I thought that was really powerful. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you see uh, Rowan's red door as the path to freedom or just another part of her captivity? Um, I think both. I think it represents, because a door is a way out, right? And a way in. So I think going back into that cage to figure out mm -hmm. how to move forward, how to go through the, that door and get to the other side is what she mm -hmm. needs to do. So. To, in order to be free, I think she has to go back into that cage. But I don't know if she's going to sort of, it's going to click for her that that's what it is. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I really have to go now, guys. Well, I don't know where my glasses mm. are. Okay. Um, okay. Love you Good guys. luck. Have fun at your event. Thank you. Um, have have fun at your event. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Bye. Thanks, Jane, for being on. See you later. Bye. Thank Bye. Yes. So, oh, Jane, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> was the uh, storyline for the episode compelling? And why or why not? Absolutely compelling. And just to kind of piggyback off of what Katrina was talking about with this idea of going home to really find out more information. And I, I kind of had that moment where mm -hmm. um, in Run, where she burst through the doors and she realizes that everything mm -hmm. is set up and everything is a complete illusion and she has to come back in and she realizes that, um, right. that Ian is not who he said he is. So I kind of am wondering if her, if her traveling back in the door is going to give her some clarity on um, Jake and her father not being mm -hmm. who she thinks they are or say they are. And I'm hoping that this new oh. episode coming up will kind of give us a little more information yeah. in that way. Cause I think it's going to be Jake centric. So we're going to learn some more information about him, but yeah. I just feel like coming back in is going to give her a closer look. Mm -hmm. I think she's been in denial for a really long time about who mm -hmm. her father is and even who Jake is. She doesn't know who Jake is. She, I think knows who her father is on some level, but I think that she's mm -hmm. in denial yeah. about because um, no, what he represents I would have to her say life for sure. But overall, the episode was yeah, it was amazing. Um, for me, I have to say that it was a it was a great build to the climax, and something something that I noticed something that I noticed is I'm I'm yeah. I'm st strongly I'm starting to believe that she's being that she was that she was being gaslighted during that episode be 
because the oh you know although it yeah we were supposed to be given the impression that it was a that it was a flashback flashbacks to her kidnapping i i, I noticed something and i i don't think that it okay. was actually a memory i think that she was actually that was actually happening to her she heard the music she got up and as she's okay. hearing the music, she's having her flashback because what I noticed is that the chairs are different. The chairs have been the same since since season two. And when you see when you see the album spread out on the table along with the record mm -hmm. player, the chairs are different. So she's changed. She's yep. changed. Right. She's changed all the furniture mm -hmm. in her house. That's her to new dining wipe room. Away the memory of the kidnapping. And here she hears this music in the middle of the night, gets mm -hmm. up, she's having these flashes. And when she goes in her room, when she goes in her living room, dining room, and she sees the albums out, the record is playing. But why are the chairs different if it's a memory? So I think she's being gaslighted. And she was actually mm -hmm. grabbed. Go ahead. What were you saying? As soon as. I was just going to say, as soon as the music started when she was in her room, I was like, somebody mm -hmm. is playing that record. Somebody is piping this music into her bedroom because I thought the same thing. Right. Like She's being completely gaslighted. It she's just... being set up. I don't know if that's true, but I mean, some have said that the new like the new um, pajamas and the new um, apartment decor just mm -hmm. just basically solidifies that it's a current it's a current. Um, right struggle and not an, a, an old memory so it could yeah. be representative of that but i thought the same thing as soon as that music started right. i was like somebody is right. pressing the play button right in and it's like to have and i and, have I, a and I also meltdown. feel you know leading up to that final so, thwack moment was that that's what it was all about because i had the strongest feeling in season four when when um andrew was basically told that it's no longer your game now. Ian told him it's no longer your game now. And he's like, look, she has to come back unharmed. She has to come back, mm. you know, and he stopped. He stopped suddenly. Yeah. He was like, she, she, we have to get her back because. And then he was like, the president needs her back, blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. the underlying element there is somebody else was controlling this. Right. And so. Yes. And I so have therefore to think that Rowan and the was key, behind the this. key I thing mean, there what? was she has to come it back just... unharmed. And technically, mentally she did not come back unharmed. And that's because of that's because that's because of Gus. Um, because everything right. everything was kinda on an even keel until Gus took over and it came and it took a violent mm -hmm. turn. And um and so therefore I wouldn't be surprised because remember right. in 515 in 515 or no, I'm sorry, 516 when Rowan said, I'll handle this my way. So I wouldn't be surprised if getting rid of if, if right. bringing Andrew back from whatever was keeping him, keeping him from speaking, because if you can induce a stroke, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a way there must be they must way to reverse it so somebody somebody had to know, <laughs> there's a way to it's like why it. <laughs> does he just suddenly pop back up all of a sudden yeah. so i'm not i wouldn't be surprised if rowan had something to do with that and then gaslighting yeah. her to that final mm -hmm. to that final moment because he kept he just kept yeah. saying you act as if you act as if your world is different from ours and it's like and he kept, kept bringing it home that she was going to get to that point right he kept driving that home so i'm almost sure I'm almost sure that he forced her to that point. Mm -hmm. and Right. Well, and even his, he, the look that he gave when she showed up to the, um, when she showed up the mm -hmm. first time, I thought was really interesting because he opened the door and, you know, Oh, come on in. And like he was, he was just really, I like, mean, he was very pleased with himself. Yeah, like, so it would not. Oh yes. It would not surprise mm -hmm. me at all. If he orchestrated so, all of this. All of it. In fact, <laughs> I mean, I'll be really it, it would be very surprising <laughs> because it's like you know, it's it's like almost as if he's been working towards this moment since the top of season three. First, he first first he played chess with her throughout season three just yes. to get her on the plane, and so and so then she came back, and he mm -hmm. wasn't pleased with her coming back, 
in the first place. So season four then became a cat and mouse game between them of her trying to prove that he was the one who actually orchestrated the death of Jerry and the death of Harrison. And, you know, and then she finally, whereas he bested her at the end of season three, she bested him at the end of season four. And so now they're back at trying to outdo the other. And it's going to be interesting to find out how that happens. So now Mm -hmm. we are at our cash or trash where we once again talk about what our favorite or least favorite moments were from the episode. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what were your cash or trash moments from from uh, Thwack? Ooh, my cash moments. Um, I really liked the kitchen scenes because I felt like that was like a, a recall of those old moments in the kitchen. Um, I thought it was very interesting. You know, in the first kitchen scene, you could see Abby pacing, you know, and then she kind of steps forward to take mm-hmm. charge of the meeting. And Olivia's face is like, hold on a second. You don't, <laughs> you're not in charge, you know? And I think that. Um, the scene with her and Abby, especially when she's like basically patting her on the leg oh, and it's like, you know, you're not a monster, you're Abby. You know, I think that she yeah. kind of banked those two kitchen scenes mm-hmm. as a, you know, I'm you're not in charge, I'm in charge. I'm the one who's always been in charge and I'll always be in charge. So those two were, I really liked those scenes. Um, I did really like the interweaving of the dream sequence with the entire episode. I know that's not necessarily a scene, but I felt like it was really captivating how they wove all of that. And you could really see that systematic undoing of Olivia. I mean, last episode Mm -hmm. with Ronnie, you could really tell that she had taken that next step. And then as we started with the dream sequence, it was just like, she was a ticking time bomb the entire episode until Mm -hmm. she picked up that metal chair. (laughs) So those two scenes, and of course the scene, um, the scene in the bunk, I, yeah. I you know, he, her taking Andrew out, he, he, he had it coming, even though did. it was really, it was really like, I mean, oh gosh, that was Because there were so, but, there were yeah, so many coded <laughs> things in that, that are, that are both uh, female centric and race centric oh. that were just, that were. Yes. Oh man. He right. was. So he, he went at, every he went at her from both that sides. He, had. he was coming at her as a woman and he was coming mm-hmm. at her as a black person and put, put the two together. You know, you're you're just trashing trashing a black mm-hmm. woman altogether. And it was just like she it had just built up. And then that song, that song, that song just keeps playing for her. And it's like and it just sent her sent yeah. her to the end. And I just feel like that song. Mm-hmm. is the trigger it was like her father introduced that music for for a reason and and but i yeah. can't i still can't understand yeah. why first of all because uh don't you worry about a thing doesn't come from songs of the key of life they come it comes from inner visions a completely different album but the father keeps introducing that album mm-hmm. cover for some reason and of course the album cover album cover obviously has a lot of reds mm-hmm. in it so again that theme of red keeps coming up so the the album cover and the song are somehow working together to trigger her because yeah and so for whatever reason that's yeah that she chose well i think yeah rowan continues Mm -hmm. to use tools against her i think and i know that there's a lot of people that really believe that and, and even Shonda Rhimes said this, you know, he does represent the truth. And, you know, there are things that he says that are true, but, you know, this really has been um, a systematic undoing mm-hmm. of Olivia Pope since he re-entered her life in season three. Yeah, And she- I think that we need to be kind of mindful of that as we watch that this is not, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you know, I just want my daughter safe. It's, mm-hmm. He's trying to create something, you know. Uh, Jake talked about the the um, that he had a defect. I think it was in what was that four twenty four twenty or four twenty one, where he was um, mm-hmm. after Russell had stabbed him a million times or whatever, and he said that uh, he had a defect and that loving Olivia was a defect. Well, Olivia has that defect mm-hmm. too. She has that defect mm-hmm. for Fitz. You know, obviously it's not for the same purpose uh, for the same person, but um, that defect. He's trying to weed mm-hmm. that defect out because, of her. Because and think. that and 
uh, and he's do, he's trying to make the ultimate the ultimate yeah. soldier and that's, in a way. And that's the key, and that's one of the key reasons I'm sure so. behind that uh, the boy speech from um, season three that uh, three ten when he went at fit so hard mm. is because the one of the main things he kept driving home is you are trying to you know you're trying to uh, take over something that I created something that I made and it's never it's never about um yeah. someone that i nurtured someone that i raised it's always about him creating her or him you know making her and it's you know it never comes from this it almost it almost mm -hmm. never feels like it's coming from a genuinely fatherly kind of you know this is my right but if you think about it mm -hmm. like he had that yeah. Rowan had that I, defect too, but that though. Because he but that's why Maya he tries to weed it out of everyone. Turned it else. around on him. He, absolutely, that's why he tries to get rid of it, rid of it from everyone else. Because he had that defect too. He loved Maya, and she mm -hmm. totally pulled one over on him. And he has not forgotten that, and mm -hmm. sees that as his undoing, perhaps. And that's why he's chosen to right weed that so out. So it's his like because because he figures people. if 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 Maya could get in could get to him anybody else can destroy any of his other other situations so but it, it would it's interesting that he's kind of forcing jake into this into this marriage of course it's all about the money it's all about the money it has nothing to do with emotion mm -hmm. or love or anything like that and he knows that and i think he present well, I don't think it has anything to do with the money. I think it has well, everything to not, do with her position well, not, in life, and she's right. not I mean, she's a good right. she's not on candy. I mean, money, but I mean, she the looks money good on that paper. they're funneling through her account is what I'm talking about. Not her money, but their their money that they're using to funnel through her mm -hmm. account to be able to fund um, Edison's campaign. That's that's all that's all it's about. There's there's no emotion involved, mm -hmm. and I think that's the only right. reason why. Right. That's the only reason this marriage is being uh, no. being pushed forward. Um, real quick on questions or comments. Um, Wit Shorty Love um, says, I remember Fitz saying in 301 in the bunker, they need to find a way through instead of work, uh, worming the way out. I think that that really applies to Olivia right now. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's and I think she's been. Yeah, she's been trying to find her way through. I like that idea. I, I literally, I like I said, I literally believe that Papa is hindering that, you know, hindering that recovery, and she's hindering her own recovery mm -hmm. because it's been said to her, it's been said, Melly said you need therapy, or or is that what your therapist said? And she says I don't have a I don't have a therapist. Then Marcus tries to talk yeah. to her. Marcus, I don't I don't need a therapist. You need Marcus. a therapist yeah. because after going. After going through something yeah. that traumatic, you need something mm. to get you through it. And when you're not when you're not seeking yes. therapy, and then you have someone who's literally hindering your progress in recovery to to keep you doing whatever mm. it is he wants you to do. And that's you know obviously he keeps saying you know get you some power, do this. So either he wants her, to, either he wants her to be president, right. or he wants her in a power position so that he can control that i don't i don't get it but um. i i don't know i don't know that i i kind of go back and forth on the whole he wants her to be president i'm just not sure on that i think that he it just what he said to edison um in 516 you know mm -hmm. you you know i'm in charge <laughs> so i think anytime mm -hmm. that rowan's not on top rowan yeah. wants to be in charge i think um you know, going back to the whole therapy thing, though, I think this is a perfect representation of, you know, ignoring your issues does not work. If you have issues, mm -hmm. get them, get the help that you need, get them worked out. Because her ignoring these things, right. two years, you know, since the kidnapping, and they've really bubbled to the surface because she's not dealt with it at all. She's ignored it. You know, she pulled herself up. She got her life back, but and she's not living. Beretta says, living. if Liv kills or has someone kill Jake, does that ruin Rowan's plan somewhat? I would say probably, but I'm sure he'd figure, he'd figure out some way around it. If, you know, 
He just he just have to he probably has another another Jake in reserve somewhere. It's like although we know that B six thirteen is dead, obviously he's trying to revive something because that's that would be the whole that would be the whole purpose of creating a president that you can mm. control because he clear, he clearly is has plans to control yeah. um, Edison because that that was very evident when he. The, way, oh, he, the yeah. way he snapped out on him. And I don't think, well, yep. clearly Edison wasn't expecting that. I think Edison knows that, that, um, that Rowan had, well, he knows him as Eli. I think he knows that Eli has more power than just being the guy from the Smithsonian clearly, or he wouldn't be putting his, putting mm -hmm. his, his self in his hands in terms of, you know, having him make him president. So he knows that he is more than he appears to be, but I don't think he knows exactly who he is. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I don't know that he yeah. knows the extent of Rowan's power. Um, I think he knows him as a powerful person. Um, but it's interesting to me because Edison has clearly taken this position of um, underling, so to speak, like I'm, you know, you're going to get me what I want and I'm going to do your bidding. Mm -hmm. So I find that interesting because Edison was always portrayed yeah. as that stand up guy who does the right thing. And so it's I think, interesting. I think, this, I think he's, you know, I think he's still power. messed up behind Olivia, uh, behind she Olivia dumping him and ultimately finding out that the reason why she really dumped him is she, she ultimately like lied to him, bold face lied to him. Like, at least three times during season two. Oh yeah. Like straight face, no yeah. to, to his yeah. face. And to then his dismissed face. him. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not even doing that with you. Yeah. And so yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, holding, he's holding a grudge. And clearly that's why, you know, yeah. he spoke to her the way he did in five fifteen as well. Uh so in this episode, um what um let's see, what was the game changing moment for you in this particular episode? Sorry, you cut out. What did you say? I, I said, what was the what was your game changing moment in this episode? Well, my game changing moment. Um, well, I, you know, Olivia going home after killing Andrew, I think her picking up that chair and killing Andrew in the way that she did was a game changing moment. I think that Olivia likes to think that she is above um, what Rowan and Jake do, I think that she pretty much said that I'm not you, Dad. You know, and I think I think mm -hmm. that that moment surprised her because I don't think that she went there intending to kill no. him. I think she thought I this negotiation one more time. I think that she probably knew though that she had nothing left to play because Fitz was right. You know, Abby tried. Well, let's give him a. a position within the administration and he's like i've yeah. got six months left we've got we've got nothing you know i think that he saw the end of it and that's why he was willing to take the fall for it so i i don't think that she intended to do that so i feel like when she ended up on her father's doorstep it wasn't necessarily an embrace of the darkness as much as it was i'm yeah. sealing or my i fate. need it or so for me that was she, a game changer or she's going there once and for all to figure out what the hell is really going on you know, mm. but um, uh, guilty yeah. please says, well, Edison was in the counterintelligence commission for or something like that. Yes, he was in a Senate, the Senate Intelligence Committee is what that's he was true. on. And that's I think that was he was implying to Olivia that he knew exactly what he was getting into. But Olivia, Olivia was trying to tell him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I because I. I because I think I think he, understand, like, I think no, he you understands don't. that Rowan or Eli or whatever work for a intelligence agency. I just don't think he knew how deep it was and how dark it was. And yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think yeah. he understands yeah. that small like, like little line item of yes, he was in charge of B six thirteen, but I don't think he had all, any because, idea what I mean, B six thirteen was I, about. You know, because my thing is I think I think when Rowan met Edison for the first time in season two, he probably already knew who Edison was, but 
And, you know, but at the mm-hmm. same time, he had to hurt him to prove to Olivia that this isn't going to, this isn't the game you want to play with me. And unfortunately it caused Edison to have to be on painkillers right. to be on mm-hmm. painkillers and have to go to rehab. <laughs> but that mm-hmm. that's how the cookie crumbles Edison. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be really interesting if he ever finds out if yeah. Roman was the one who put him there and put him in that position to have to be hopped up on painkillers. Um, yeah. Let's see. What was my game changing moment right. for this particular episode? Um, I think the game changer for me came in one of the kitchen scenes, like you said, was it was not just so much that Abby, Abby took over in the first one, but in the second one, she literally, it was more that moment when Fitz says, instead of turning to Olivia and saying, Olivia, what do you think? He turned to Abby and said, Abby, what do you think? And that look on, that Mm -hmm. look on Olivia's face was just like, are you? this is what we're doing now <laughs> okay and it, it was almost as yeah. if she could, in that moment she could have picked up a pot of hot grease and threw it on abby and <laughs> it was oh there was daggers for sure she turned around like did you just cut mm-hmm, me off mm-hmm. and did you just listen to her <laughs> that was a game changer and then yep. mm-hmm. Well, I think that she's it's really interesting that she's seen like everybody's kind of moving on mm-hmm. without her you yeah. know like you know, I think she thinks that no, everybody needs me, but right, and, and it's still kinda, existing. And it actually kind of started in season at the top of season four because they had all moved on. Huck was at the Huck was at the yeah. uh, Best Buy wannabe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Quinn Quinn was basically <laughs> running OPA, and, and now Abby now Abby yeah. was press secretary yeah. at you know at at the White House, and now she's yeah. chief of staff and. And poor Abby, I don't know why, you know, it's like, first of all, I think, I think had she had um, Cyrus retaliated in any way, there's no way what happened in in this past episode would have happened because I was very surprised that, that uh, Cyrus walked away without any, you know, animosity or, you know, or some sort of backlash Yeah, we, and you never know, it's, it still could be coming. But mm-hmm. the fact that he did, the fact that he didn't retaliate, oh, yeah. gave Abby that one next notch that she needed to feel like she was the big that she was actually that she mm-hmm. was actually the big dog. Yeah. But what she doesn't realize is that Cyrus yeah. was going anyway. So it's like so you, so you caught him and yeah. you fired him. Oh oh well, he's moving mm-hmm. on. He had already moved on because I I believe it was yeah. a, um not that episode but the previous episode when they showed us twice when he said, I gotta go. He was literally saying, I'm done, I gotta go. So she she, did, she didn't really have a, she didn't really yeah, necessarily yeah. have mm-hmm. a victory over Cyrus, but she had the impression that she did, which then gave her the empowerment right. to then go to my next game right. changing moment was when Olivia realized that Abby was the one responsible for the change up. Oh, and that was, yeah. and you, and, and it, was, oh my God, I don't know how many times yeah. she said Abby's name, but it was, you could, yeah. yes. And it was just oh, like, like six or eight. Like, it was like six or eight. Abby. And it just, and it, it, it and it get quieter. Oh. It got quieter each moment she said Abby. it. And you could yeah. just, I, I just remember getting chills yeah. by the time she got to the last, by the time she got to the last one. And then yes. when, when Abby basically told her, "Yes, you work for me," turn in your hard tur- turn in your hard pass. Oh, I was yes. like, "Wow, you don't you just don't know what you've just done." Because there was a moment, there was a moment, and yeah. if you if you freeze frame mm-hmm. it, it's like probably one of the ugliest things I've ever seen on a black woman is the side eye with the exhale, because she literally kind of had this side eye gaze at, at Abby and you could tell that she was trying to control herself in that moment. And there is a wide shot where Olivia is literally standing next to the desk and there's a paperweight. And I swear to God, I was on the edge of my seat. I said, Oh my God, she's going to bash Abby. I'm, I literally did. I thought she was going to bash. I thought she was going to bash gonna Abby upside the head with the paperweight. <laughs> I'm, ser- I'm serious. Go Go back and look at that scene. Oh, and, no. and that, that oh, one moment no. when Olivia does that, it's that side eye and, ex- <laughs> and exhale. They do, a, they do a wide shot and you see this huge crystal 
tape oh. weight on the on the desk, and I said, I said, oh my gosh, she's gonna bash her upside the head. I mean, I didn't oh. think that she would kill her, but I thought maybe that was where the thwack yeah. was gonna come in, because um, <laughs> I was like, now that would be now that would be a total yeah. I didn't feel Abby like Abby was Abby, in danger. She was. In- I didn't feel like she overstepped, <laughs> though. I mean, she really was just trying to do her job. I mean, you know, when yeah. when Liv was like basically patting yeah. her on the knee and saying, "You're not a monster, I, honey. I, you're, you're Abby, right. and you can I come back and Abby work was for doing me." Her job. You know, I I'm agree like, with that part. But I, the thing, the the reason that I had an issue was the reason that she did it. She did it because she felt undermined by Olivia when Olivia. Olivia did that. I that was that's that wow. was just my personal observation because it was just she because mm-hmm. Olivia in that moment, although she didn't think that she was being condescending, mm-hmm. she was. And and that's and Abby was not pleased. Abby was not pleased. Oh. So I think she did it to prove a point. Mm-hmm. She was doing her she was doing her job, but she was doing it to prove a point. Oh sure. So to, to Oh yeah, and I think it's yeah, it is. It's twofold, but I think that those th- those two and their relationship has been really interesting because um, I really feel like Abby mm-hmm. is trying to like um, come up as equal to to Liv, and Liv isn't. You know, there are moments when Liv is like, you know, you're really good at you. You know, you're really good at your job. Um, what episode was that? Early in the season, five oh three. I think where she was like, you know, I'm not used to being on this side of things. You know, you are really good at your job and the view from here, you know, you're doing a really good job. So I think there is that she does respect her, but I think when Olivia feels that that position, that that position had been threatened throughout the episode until we get to that scene with Abby and Olivia. And I think, you know, I think that's why Abby or um, Olivia put her in her place really, because she does feel you know, that threatening, um, she's really threatened her position. She's, she's completely taken her position, um, with Fitz and within the white house. And I think, you know, that whole pat on the knee and the condescending, you know, you're, you're not a monster. You're, you're Abby. I think that that, um, was really just her trying to put her back in her place. Like you are not me. I'm, you know, I'm the monster. I'm the one who makes the decisions. I'm the one who tells us what we're doing. I'm the one who's leading the team. And Abby flat out said, you are not leading this team. I am leading this right. team. And I'm well, going to take your hard pass. No, she, she did, did like not that. that. <laughs> but, did not take um, hard uh, pass. Before it scrolls <laughs> past me, I just want to address uh, Wit Shorty Love. Uh, she says, can we talk about Olivia's manic speech to Abby about Fitz being a leader? Because it was very hypocritical and considering what had been happening at OPA over the years. Um, I'm going to say that she was in a stream of consciousness moment in that situation because she was wanting because it was the easy way out it was the easy way out for for because over over the years mm. when fitz has tried to step up they've always stopped him because it could expose everybody but in this particular situation him him dropping this bomb and taking the blame keeps everybody safe like she said he's falling on his sword and that made her happy. Mm-hmm. I think she was genuinely happy by the fact that he was willing to take the bullet for all of them, as opposed to in the in previous. It's just it's you're right. It is hypocritical. It is a double edged sword of one all throughout season two and most and season three as well. No, no, no. You can't do this. You can't do this because it'll expose us all. We'll mm-hmm. all get in trouble. And now all of a sudden he's saying, "I'm going to take yeah. the blame for this." And it's like, "Oh, great! He's going to take the blame, so we're good." You know, yeah. So it's, it is, it is, it is yeah. hypocritical. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It is. Well, it is hypocritical. I, I wonder though, mm-hmm. you know, her father told her what she was going to have to do. And I kind of felt like that moment was a sense of relief like, oh, I, I don't have to do this mm-hmm. now. You know, and then it was just like justification after justification of why, why this was okay and this was a good choice and this was a good decision. And it was like, oh, thank God he's saving us. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not going to have to kill him. And, so I'm wondering if that was kind of running around in her brain. And like, honestly, really gonna have the to unspoken do message to, to Abby in that moment of never cross me again is look what you made me do. Be- because I had this handle oh, and yeah. you went behind mm-hmm. my back. 
You went mm-hmm. behind my back. And then so I had this to clean it up. That's, yeah. the, that's the unspoken message. Yeah. In that is, you made me do this. And yeah. because it's like, because. And then she went so far as to say, you know, you have one well, hour to do it. I'm sorry, repeat that. <laughs> oh, I just said, she went so far as to say, and right. you have one hour to do right. it. This is what you're going to have this... to do to clean this up, you know? And then she basically stepped right. over Andrew's body this and left was, for this them, is, left this them is to clean your it mess, up. <laughs> and you have one hour to clean it up. Because lit, cause liter, literally, mm-hmm. lit, you know, yeah. they, they, got him, they got him to take the money. You know, and then he claims he wasn't going to take it. But then here was here was a solu- here was a solution that would mm-hmm. have left it. You know, yes, you know, Fitz's administration would have went down, but then she would have had to resort to what she did because she wanted her father to be. She right. wanted her father to be right. wrong. She wanted she wanted him to be wrong. So it was by any means that would keep wrong. her from yeah. keep her hands clean. That's what that's what she was willing to do, and by Fitz, mm-hmm. even though it does seem very hypocritical, by right. Fitz falling on his sword, everybody you know everybody else stays clean, and Fitz, his his administration is six six months mm-hmm. away from being over. Based on everything that he's done, this one war, mm-hmm. yes, it would have it would have been a dark mark on him, would have been a dark mark on him, but then yeah. everybody else, she could have continued and maintained he could he could have claimed that nobody else knew that this was happening right. Melly didn't know and she and everybody would still be clean and yeah. and abby in doing her job yes she did her job but she she put olivia in a position where she had to be face to face and alone with andrew because she was only alone with only alone with him in a yeah. public facility now she was alone with him in a cl- enclosed room and she put her in a position to have to go mm-hmm. back and face him on her right which she never should have done admittedly she, as 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 katrina said mm-hmm. everything that she's done so in these in this past season has been of her own making since she's been back since she's been back and she put herself yeah. in that position in calling jake mm-hmm. to get jake's pass and um, she put herself in that position. So, but again, she is putting, like I said, yeah. without even actually saying it, she put the blame on, on Abby. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another, you know, interesting issue because she's not really taking a lot of responsibility for the, for the choices mm-hmm. that she's making, you know? And until she starts to take some responsibility for the choices that she's yeah. making, her behavior will not change. She's going to continue yeah. down this spiraling path until yeah. she starts taking some responsibility. And the thing is, you know, we look for the rock bottom. Yeah. We're like, oh, she killed somebody. This has yeah. to be rock bottom. This is not yeah. rock bottom. It is not. There's more coming. There's more coming. <laughs> rock bottom is a feeling. It's not yeah. an event. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got to <laughs> get, get to that point. She's got to get to that point before right. she makes some changes. Right. And uh, I just also want to address the idea that people have that walking through that door was the door to freedom. In a, like Katrina said, in a, in a way, yes. And in a way, no. For me, what mm-hmm. I see happening is, number one, we all, um, I think it was season two. And I forget what the event was that caused her to do this. But remember the time she took to her bed for like a whole day? And even Edison couldn't get her out of the bed. Um, yeah. Like I, I, right. Well, it was and because defiance was coming to the surface. So Let's I see, see that happening to her again. Yeah. And I think that's the reason she went there. And this is probably also the reason that Papa pushed her to this point. Remember, again, he said, I will handle this in my way. So he's pushed her to a point where he knew she's going to have to shut down. Mm-hmm. So as long as she shut, as long as she shut down, she's not investigating yeah. anything. She's not trying to dig into what they're doing. But mm-hmm. he may have underestimated yeah. her because that may be That's the right. very reason why she's there. That may be the very reason why she's there is because she wants to get yeah. to the bottom of what's going on. So if she plays his game and she walks through his door and she pretends to be overwrought over this situation, she gets more information yeah. than he would probably ever allow her allow her to get she gets mm-hmm. to overhear them plotting you know while while he's while he's thinking that she's in a bedroom catatonic she gets to hear everything she gets to hear all their conversation 
Yeah, I I mean, I don't know that that was her. I'd be surprised if that was her original thought in going there. I mean, she had just killed somebody. You know, she had become what her father said she would. I think that's more of a, this is where I belong because of what I have done. So not to say Mm -hmm. that she won't start listening when she's there. You know, something's got to pique her interest. She's going to overhear something. I'm kind of curious to know if now that she's in the inner circle, if they're going to, you know, tell her what their plan is or if she's going to, or if she's just going to overhear them talking about it. I don't know. She might. I'm kind of curious Um, to know more uh, about that, I guess. Wit. Uh, you're saying you're so you're laughing your ass off at the fact that Liv still has a hard pass. Actually, she doesn't. She actually borrowed Jake's hard pass. That's how she got in. Um, and Vicky Jester says yeah. uh, the difference is that now that his term is about to be up in the past, the team still needed him. Cyrus, Melly and Liv have all left the White House. And that's true. Um, mm-hmm. They don't they don't. You know, he's already mm-hmm. served two terms. So. Um, there's nothing more, you know, and I hate to say there's nothing more that they can use them for, but, you know, ultimately, to be quite honest, that's what everyone was doing. Everyone had their ulterior, ulterior motives for making him who he was. Um, I'm not, I'm trying, I would have, I'd have to think a little harder mm-hmm. as to what it was that Olivia was getting out of it, other than the fact that, you know, they were together. But uh, I don't think that she came in. Well, I think she's telling yeah. herself now that that yeah. was a lot about power, and, but that's why she and it also, with him and wanted to and, him and it also actually power, raised her profile because it now. was the way that she was able to start OPA in the first place. So she did get something out of it because OPA wasn't in existence until after she left the first time. So she did. She did. So they all got something out of it. They all, uh, mm-hmm. they, they all used. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody yeah. has used that position to and their yes, advantage, to their uh, own Marita, personal gain. Marita Jackman, I agree that Liv only resorted to killing Andrew because Andrew couldn't keep his mouth shut. And you, let's see, she said, I'm sure Liv would have offered Andrew a sweeter deal. <laughs> she was actually trying to, but again, uh, like you said, he couldn't, he couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was... She she was, was. He, he had... Was, he, like, there he, wasn't yeah, he anything he wanted that, that revenge. He was, he's consumed by revenge, and that's all... He was interested in it didn't matter how much money because even after they offered him 10 million and he said you probably you probably didn't transfer it anyway yeah. but now i want 20 million he was just gonna keep he was yeah. just gonna keep up in his stakes and he upped yeah yeah he, oh he got into the yeah, billions he, there for a second he yeah and he basically billions. upped like, himself in a head it's into never a gonna be enough. so it's like you used to bat you used to pass the seal yeah. You, you surpassed yeah. the ceiling and you got your head yeah, bashed in. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, and obviously, again, we were still on game-changing mm-hmm. moments. That was the game-changing moment overall was, you know, Olivia just totally letting loose. And mm. I believe mm-hmm. she she bashed his head in eight, time, eight times. Yeah. Yeah. It was – and I and, – <laughs> that last one was the worst though because she paused yes, but i'm like but then, the thing is that the fact is, is that she she hit him so tough and the fact that they showed it that was the most shocking part to me was she literally put one of the chair legs through his face i was like wow wow this we're we were on we were on walking mm-hmm. dead levels of violence in that moment <laughs> i was like <laughs> I was like, damn, oh, she put the chair all the way through his cool. face. <laughs> so, um, so who was your yes, um, MVP for this episode? Who was your favorite character for this episode? MVP? Um, ooh, that's a hard one. Because mm-hmm. it was like everybody worked so well together. Um. I guess my MVP, mm, uh, I guess Fitz coming in at the end there. I guess him coming in and seeing the ugly, I guess that was my MVP moment. Just because I was really shocked that she allowed him to see that, number one, but that she called him. That's the other thing. I I would have to say that they did establish that that there is cell service in the uh, bunker. So people, people... they did establish that in, in one of the scenes where they were talking, <laughs> where they were talking to him. And um, 
Yeah. And so I know there was some confusion yeah. in, in one of the groups where people were like, well, did he just did he just show up or did she call him? I would have to say she called him, probably called him before she slipped down the wall and was just sitting there on the floor. Um, and and I and yeah, and I, I, and yeah. I would assume that the president also called Abby, you know, not not. I don't think I don't think either of them knew what to expect when they came in there. I think she probably told him something happened, but she probably didn't tell him exactly what happened. Because Abby was Yeah, not I don't ready. think that was <laughs> at all. Was, <laughs> Abby was, I, was I, like, I want to give Abby MVP uh, status just for kind of like, you know, trying to come up, but <laughs> She tried, but yeah. Olivia she shut that tried. down. Don't you ever? She tried. <laughs> I was. Oh my god! It was Ooh. just like. Ooh. Oh, it, it was brutal. It was just brutal, and I'm sure. And I'm and I'm hoping at some point they'll be able to have a conversation about it. You know, because I, I, I don't know how do you come back? How do you? How does your com- friendship come back from seeing that your best friend killed somebody? I, you know, and then she. <sighs> I I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it will. I hope that Abby sees that as a, you know, she really needs a lot of help, and I hope that she sees that. But it exactly. is really scary when your friend, and like, kills somebody, right? Exactly. You know, you and walk I'm, into and it, and you're like, ah. And uh, we didn't, so we I, also I didn't address know. from 516, the ending of 516, when um, Alex Vargas showed up on Cyrus's doorstep to talk to Michael. We'll come back to that. Um, so, because I wanted to jump over and get into uh, get into this before Katrina left, but who is your least favorite character in this episode and why? In this episode, um, I guess maybe I don't know. It was like my least favorite, but like the Vargas stuff. It just seems like this kind of like this fringe storyline that I'm not really, I guess, needing at the moment. I'm sure it will be necessary in the greater scheme of things, but like this, this episode was jam packed full of stuff. And so sometimes that Vargas stuff is like, okay, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, there's other stuff that's really, really, really good right yeah. now that the Vargas stuff that and, kind of um, just takes minutes away. I basically. saw a, a res- response from someone about Cyrus taking away, um, taking away Olivia's past in season one. He did, but, uh, but um, what's his name? Got it right back. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. What was his name? The mole. What was his name? Uh, his name is, uh, um, Charles, not Charlie. Jesus, I always know his name, and now all of a sudden I don't know his name. He was the blonde. He was the blonde. He turned out to be the mole in season two. Oh, Billy Chambers, um, thank you. Yes. Are you talking? So Billy Chambers Chambers got it right back because the guard, the guard, uh, Cyrus had called and told the guard to take it from her and Billy Chambers called and got it re- got it reinstated. So she got it back. Every time it's been taken away, right, she's gotten right, right, it back. Right. So she'll likely get it back this time right. too, because I doubt that Abby's gonna want mm-hmm. to. <laughs> I'm sure she already has it back in her purse as well. <laughs> she probably, she probably. <laughs> it's already back. It's, 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 it's Abby stopped, probably handed it to her on the way out of the bunker. Stop by and talk to, talk to my secretary. What's her name? Charlotte, talk to, he said, Charlotte has your pass. Just stop by. You just hit more. Here, Charlotte. You just hit. <laughs> no, Abby was like, hey, here, girl. here's your pass back. Look, my I'm dad, really here. sorry. Here, uh, here's your pass back. And, uh, mm-hmm. I'm really uh, sorry see. I took it from you. And I'm not sure what your mm-hmm. comment, Vicky Beaster, is about because of Amanda Tanner. Oh, because that's the reason that Cyrus took it. That's the reason that Cyrus took it away. Yes. But mm. she got it. She got it back. She got it back in the very same moment that it was taken away. Um, let's see what else uh, fits. <laughs> oh, I think you know what Moretta. Uh, Moretta says Fitz didn't even look to see what condition uh, Andrew was in. He went straight to his Livy. 
Well, we we on, we only saw the camera no. angle that was on <laughs> Olivia before he stepped into the frame. But I'm pretty sure he probably saw that and was like, "Damn." Yeah. I don't. You know what? He, he took like you can hear it. You can, he took two steps, <laughs> and then you hear all these other steps. Like you can hear the two yeah, steps. Yeah, you heard him like, stop uh, going. You almost feel him looking yeah. over there, like okay, okay. You hear his footsteps stop cold, like oh shit. And then then he, then then he goes over and are you okay? Because it was so funny because because I was just sitting there, I was just sitting there, there okay? looking at the buzz spatter on her face. It took me a minute to focus because I was still laughing. I I know I'm going to hell. I was. So, yeah. I was really surprised that she called him. Like I was, I was watching with a friend, and I'm like, "Did she call Huff? Did she call Jake?" And then when right. he showed up, I was like, "Oh my word!" Right. She called him. This is amazing. So I was, Good. I was actually amazed. Um, that she was able, you know, that he was able to even compose himself. But like I said, I laughed throughout. Uh, oh, the moment, the moment that uh, Fitz, uh, not Fitz, but Huck went to go visit Andrew the first time to put the needle in his neck before. <laughs> <laughs> no more talking. I, I, I laughed so hard. His I face breathe. was like, not During you that. again. I laughed all the way through the commercial. I was running around my living room, but I couldn't stop laughing. So, I love that, that boot on the glass on right. the floor. So, then, you know. so uh, then by the time we got... That was good. That was really, really good. By the time we got to the chair bashing and Andrew just kept going, I said, oh my God, stop. Please stop. Please stop. This is not gonna. This is not gonna end well because that's when I realized stop, that, stop, that the thwack stop. was coming in. But I didn't realize it was gonna be uh -huh. a chair. I thought it was gonna be something in her, in her purse. Yeah. I thought she was gonna beat him with her. her yeah. Purse. Like a computer. Oh, she's like a computer that they were her. using to try to make the bed. <laughs> Shut, up. Shut up. But when she picked up the chair, I un, I reflexively started laughing because I was like, I can't believe this is actually happening. And then it just kept getting worse, and I was laughing even harder. And I was like, and I was literally like, texting. Oh, we should have known. I was literally mess, you know, posting it on Facebook. I'm going to hell. I can't stop laughing. I don't believe this is happening because I just, like it was. It was just so shocking that it was funny to me, and I just couldn't even believe that I was. I couldn't even believe I was laughing. So oh, by the time Fitz yeah. stepped into the frame. Some, you know, I was watching it with my roommate and he literally had to tell me who it was. It was like, because I couldn't focus. I'm like, who, who is that? Who is she talking? Who is she talking to? <laughs> who is it? Who is it? So, but, uh, hilarious. Yeah, this, so funny. Uh, da, 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 da. But, so, Okay. We gotta, okay, so we I gotta get going up. here in a minute. We'll wrap this so. up real quick. Uh, so that was, we went through the MP, MVP situation. And uh, any particular character quotes? Obviously, we mentioned one, which was no more talking. No more talking was awesome. Yeah. I love that. That was. Oh, yeah. No more talking. Um, I liked the moment where she was, where Fitz thanked her for calling yeah. him, and she was like, you that, was, call that was that was actually. Did. A, he was that was actually like a very cold moment because it was, it was yeah. funny and cold at the same time. That made me laugh. And she kind of looked at him like, are you serious? <laughs> you didn't call me. Abby did. And I, and I think that, that I think <laughs> and I think that also made Abby feel good too. She was kind of feeling herself in that moment too. It was like, you know, she's actually giving me some credit. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, real quick, yeah. do you have any final thoughts before you go in terms of um, in terms of the overall you know we've got I, what do we have overall it was a great episode it was beautifully shot tony goldwyn deserves all the praise for that because his direction is superior mm -hmm. on this episode uh, you know we've got four left i have no idea what we are going to see i have yeah. a sneaking suspicion that she is not to um figure out that she's yeah living yeah. on the dark side quite yet so yeah. i'm i'm thinking we're gonna see her kind of embrace that lifestyle yeah. a bit which i'm a little nervous about so, so yeah i think i think that it's been I guess. the whole the season has been on an upswing since we since we returned 
because I think a lot of people, a lot of people were left with a bad yeah. taste in their mouth regarding the abortion and all of that stuff and the breakup. But it, you know, the thing is, is it was probably the first time during a break finale that we didn't get a cliffhanger that left us hanging on the edges of our edges of our seats to see what was going to happen. Mm -hmm you know, when they, when they came back. So I think that had a lot to do with yeah. the slow momentum buildup of the season coming back from the break. But since they came yeah. back, I mean, they've just been, they've just been hitting it out of the park for me. I mean, I, I, you know, actually I felt like the first half of the season yeah. was, you know, was doing pretty well. Um, and like I said, then they, they hit that bump in the road with the uh, abortion and the breakup because it was very unexpected because everyone again they they started off promoting the promoting the season as at last which made you think which made you think that they were going to be together mm -hmm. and then as quickly as they put them together they broke them right. apart and i think the fan the fans weren't prepared for that mm -hmm. and my yeah. personal thought yeah yeah well and i think that's yeah. strategic and, um, that's promotion and it, you know it, it can either work in as an as an advantage or a disadvantage and in some cases it was a, it was a disadvantage but um for me yeah. olitz nor ole have mm. ever been the central focus of this show for me um i just uh for me um it's all about the intrigue and the the political the new some there's something new that i learn about the political system every day you know or every week from watching this show because mm -hmm. there's something that that'll come up in the episode that I'm like, mm -hmm. now what does that mean? And I go research it and it, ma it makes me learn. It makes me learn stuff. And yeah. Um, big, yeah, I'm big into research. So I love, that's what I love. That's the aspect I love of the show. And for me, yeah. the romance is a byproduct is a, uh, is a standby scandal compared to the overall, overall stuff that's going on. Um, mm -hmm. and real quick before we, yeah. before we have to go off the air, I just want to go back and address real quick that final moment in, uh, 515 when, uh, Vargas, Alex, Alex Vargas shows up at, uh, okay. Michael's house. First of all, they've already yeah. established for us that Michael is being paid to be there. Now, whether or not he's now, whether or not he's actually formed some sort yes. of feelings for, Cyrus, we already know that Cyrus, we already know that Cyrus has no feelings for him. Mm -hmm. and that that was already established. So I couldn't imagine right. that Michael's going to be jealous. He may he may be surprised. I I actually I actually have a feeling mm -hmm. this isn't going to work out in Alex's favor because he's. I think he may be surprised that Michael is like, I knew, you know, that because because we we, mm. yeah. He, and I guess well, I thought no, he did know. He, he did ask one I time. He did, he did know, ask so. one time during um, one of the episodes. Uh, be oh, uh, because Cyrus was so preoccupied with the Vargas situation that was going on in Virginia at the time when that whole setup mm -hmm. that he did with getting Vargas shot. Uh, the episode where Michael was playing mm -hmm. with the doll's hair, braiding the doll's hair, and he, and he mentioned Tom. Or Tom had called and he said, I'll be right there. And Michael said, who's Tom? So I'm sure he was aware that there might be somebody, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't think he knew exactly who it was. And, yeah. I, and, and we all know that he doesn't okay. want to well. confront Tom. <laughs> oh, who would? You're not going <laughs> to. Oh, he's scary. <laughs> He's scared. I do wonder though, is it going to circle back around that Tom is working with Rowan still? Because you remember when Rowan had Tom right. released, like Tom was his best guy. So I find it hard to believe that he's just kind of hanging with Cyrus and doing this little right. eh, mean, little side job with Cyrus. I'm, so I'm sure he's surprised probably, well, the thing, if Tom is somehow still involved with Rowan. I'm pretty sure he probably is, but at the same time. I'm, you know, because people are always like the whole Tom being gay came out of the blue. I'm like, being gay sometimes does just come out of the blue. If you didn't know, if it wasn't information you knew beforehand yeah. and somebody suddenly tells you, surprise, you know, so it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not something that you just automatically, right. you know, you look at somebody and go, oh, he must be gay. It's not always the case. So 
And again, we mm -hmm. have no history on Tom. So therefore, whatever happens with Tom is out of the blue. The fact that he was a B613 agent came out of the blue. The fact that he killed uh, little Jerry came out of the blue. So everything that you mm -hmm. learn that's new about a character on this show is going to be out of the blue. We didn't know that Melly was raped. We didn't know that Melly was raped. That came out of the blue. So yeah. just look at it like that. There are going to be, there's going to be new mm -hmm. information because we there's still stuff that we don't even know about Fitz. Yeah. So, and uh, hell, we're oh, about to yeah, get a whole absolutely. episode that's going to come out of absolutely. the blue about Jake. So, yeah, because we we may be surprised to find out who Jake, Jake really was before he became B six thirteen. So it's all going to be out of the blue. So just just know that that there um, every new thing that we learn about any character is going to come out of the blue. Uh, yeah, and I agree. I agree, Moretta, that yeah. Alex Vargas yep. just yep. might end up dead. First of all, you're dealing with Cyrus, you're dealing with Tom, the two of them together, and you've just exposed their affair. And you're and you're also, you're also stepping into the fact that you Michael has a know. three year contract, a three year million dollar contract. So I really wouldn't be surprised if Michael <laughs> would be the one. To, to mess up to mess up Alex because you're messing with his money because first of all any anything yeah. that Michael does if he breaks the confidentiality if he talks to Alex about about this situation he has to pay back all three million oh, yeah. plus a million dollars if he doesn't if he if he talks so mm -hmm. Alex is stepping into that Alex is stepping into the unknown he doesn't know what he's dealing with well so yeah, that's that's he what really I wanted is. to address by he that really about is. that because we didn't even just talk about it earlier. But um, yeah, <laughs> Moretta, who cares about Jacob? Yeah. Not me. Um, um, Cherry, uh, Blast, Blast, Cherry. I'm hoping that we do get a cliffhanger because those are usually the best, um, the best things. Because we honestly. Because honestly, mm -hmm. I think they'll learn. I'm hoping they'll learn we'll from the mistake one. of season four because they left us without a cliffhanger for season four, and people were, people were pissed because it was nice that we saw them together on the balcony, but it left no anticipation for anything. It left, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I, you know, I wanted, to see, I wanted to see where it goes, five. but you know how you know how usually at the end, you know, like if you're. <laughs> I was because in previous in previous <laughs> seasons I've always been you know like season two season three I went to actual um, scandal finale parties and you know and by the time by the time it was over people mm -hmm. were heading to the bar to get a drink because it was like oh my god I can't believe that just happened because you know the season season <laughs> two finale was all about you know yeah. Papa re revealing himself season three was the murder of Jerry and right. Harrison even though we didn't know it time we didn't know for sure if Harrison was going to be dead but it was still like yeah. you know it left you with this anticipating feeling and then to go to season three's I mean season four's finale and just kind of it was yeah. anticlimactic I think that that left a little people a few people just kind of like wah, wah, wah. yeah but so yeah. I know you gotta go I know you got to go, but thank you for coming on. I really on. have to go now. And, uh, yep. Be more than happy to have you on again. And any Thanks for having me. Thank you. And so everybody, it was really um, fun. Thank that you. concludes our episode for April 16th, 2016. You can join us again in three weeks on May 7th. And um, we look forward to, um, let me tell you what those episodes will be. Um, because they're going to be, well, first of all, we've got episode 18 coming up, which is called uh, Till Death Do Us Part, where we'll get some uh, backstory on Jake. And that will be directed by Steph Green. And episode 19 called Buckle Up with an exclamation point. Pretty uh, similar to, pretty similar to Thwack, which is directed by Oliver yeah. Bokelberg. Bokel and episode 20, Trump Card, directed by Jan Turner. So until next time, please pay attention and review, review, review. Bye. See you, Sarah. <laughs>